Today's topic is uh, imaging supply chain, right? So let's look at uh, the agenda I prepared for today. Uh, we will start off to talk about um, um, current supply chain focus and uh, where's the current problem and uh, what new challenge we're facing uh, in today's world and a couple of strategic questions we have to ask. And then uh, supply chain framework um, is a consolidation of my past experience. So uh, high level, I will uh, highlight a couple of box uh, you guys have to have uh, aware. And then at the end, we'll uh, go through a couple of uh, digital solutions where can be helped by digital solutions along the supply chain. Okay, so um, uh, before I go into uh, current supply chain focus, so I uh, would like to uh, ask you, uh, anyone know about you know, the term supply chain management? Uh, start off from when and who named supply chain member, uh, management? Who the first guy named it? Okay, maybe po Professor Lo Lo the answer. <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually uh, yesterday I searched from Google, uh, the term supply chain management uh, was first named by a guy or a professor uh, called uh, Keith Oliver, um, dated in uh, 1982. Uh, so we have talked uh, about supply chain more than 38 years, even before some of uh, the students you were born, okay? But what's wrong with our supply chain? Um, why still so many companies unprepared for supply chain disruption this year? Um, even though uh, we all experienced previous crises like Live 1-1, uh, SARS, financial, tsunami, etc. There must be some missing links, right? There must be some wrong focus, uh, which we must reimagine. Okay, will that be uh, attitude? Because some company might think, you know, um, um, uh, this only happen once, won't happen again, so I, I won't do anything. Or uh, basically, the procurement function, supply chain function, uh, with you know uh, some some missing link, or um, the KPI is wrong. People, uh, we just measure people uh, the cost saving, but not the revenue assurance or whatever reason, yeah, then uh, we're going to look at those issues one by one, okay? Um, so let's um, look at conventional supply chain focus. I believe uh, cash flow, physical flow, and information flow are the key elements taught by the school to you, right? And uh, the first two, they are interrelated because uh, uh, um, uh, on-time delivery means uh, if you're able to deliver the goods to your uh, customer earlier, you're able to send the invoice to them, okay? You, you, you're able to get back the money quicker. So that's going to improve your DSO. DSO means days sales outstanding, which affect the AR, okay? So the first two will be interrelated and will be much easier to do, yeah? As long as you, uh, um, you know, uh, drive the efficiency, then you basically will achieve that. But uh, the first thing information flow, the first element will be most difficult to do it. Because uh, along the supply chain, there are so many different players. Even though you would like to share information with uh, uh, different players, but that all depends on are they willing to do that? Uh, example, like uh, some factories, they might want to cover up some information, don't want to be too transparent, okay? Because if you you understand that you know the, the process, the status, the order status, then they won't have any leeway when there is a, a new ad hoc order come in. They might they might uh, shuffle uh, the schedule to uh, accommodate you know some ad hoc changes. So uh, when they able to cover up uh, the uh, the planning within their own, they have more leeway to uh, manipulate the whole thing, right? So um, doing the uh, information for integration will be quite difficult. I still not see so many companies successfully on this area. But uh, basically the three goals there will be uh, um, reduce costs, improve efficiency, and fulfill demand. And um, I think, because um, uh, I uh, work for government industry for so many years time, uh, one thing I recall is uh, used to be Hong Kong, we have, uh, we, we got a uh, government manufacturer in Hong Kong, right? They back to many years ago. Uh, and then they moved from Hong Kong to southern part of China, and then uh, even further to the northern part. And uh, today, uh, um, the player 
moving out from China to Vietnam, to Thailand, to Cambodia, or even today some go to Africa, right? Uh, because uh, moving from one location to a lowest cost location is the most easy way to achieve the cost saving, I believe, instead of spend time looking into a process improvement or automation, okay? Um, so that's the reason I still not yet see um, the data and system integration are doing well along the supply chain. Uh, so that's the reason why still so many companies, they still not yet get seamless end-to-end uh, -end real time information. Okay. And uh, recently I also talked to uh, one high tech company. They, they call them high tech or we classify them high tech, but in the old day, we used to call them an uh, electronic firm, uh, but because today they produce IoT device or home applicants, sounds like really high tech, but not really high tech. When I talk to them, they even don't have uh, a proper ERP system uh, without uh, standardization across all the location, okay? Still heavily rely on uh, manual Excel uh, paperwork in their procurement team. And I think the missing link today uh, could be uh, agility, resilience, and uh, we need to also have a tool uh, to help us to uh, do kind of a what if scenario, scenario analysis when the crisis happen, okay? And uh, let's move to the uh, new challenges we are facing. Uh, from macro view, of course, uh, COVID-19 uh, trade war still ongoing and uh, consumer behavior uh, changes. Um, we, we all heard about the new terms like uh, stay at home economies, uh, work from home economy, uh, uh, business from offline to uh, go to online, uh, to B2B, to B2B to, B to, B to C, okay? And the voice from uh, Gen C and millennials also taking place because uh, they all look for climate friendly, planet friendly, eco-friendly uh, product, okay? Uh, they like those company, okay, with uh, emphasis on the planet friendly, eco-friendly. And uh, for food and diet, they also like uh, low calorie, low sugar, organic food, okay? And um, sustainability also a buzzword, uh, no matter uh, from uh, most of the company or from individuals. Because uh, all we concern environmental protection, the social issue, uh, how we're going to sustain um, uh, for a uh, for for uh, human beings betterment of the future, right? And uh, Darwinian shakeout is all about uh, M and A merger and acquisition. Like my previous company, uh, Bosini acquired by a uh, mainland uh, China group, uh, the Li Ling Group, and also a sincere department store also acquired by a Shenzhen de uh, developer. Okay. Um, uh, also, I could also name you know, a couple of famous brands they go bankruptcy this year, like uh, JCPenney is gone, uh, JCrew is gone, okay? Even um, um, Victoria Secret, okay? Uh, ladies like this brand very much, also go bankruptcy. Um, innovation imperative, because we we have uh, you know, quite a number of uh, challenge with uh, where we could you know, create the opportunity. It's all about rely on uh, a new portal, new, um, new business strategy, new business model. So you need to be more uh, creative. Uh, you need to be more innovative, okay? Supply chain disruption, uh, we're going to uh, deep dive more in uh, later, later slides. And uh, the last one will be uh, digital uh, recalibration. I think most of you uh, will, will heard about uh, uh, quite a number of emerging technology terms like uh, AI, artificial intelligence, big data, bot train, robotic, Philippine thing, right? We'll cover that later. Okay, give you some uh, food for thought. COVID-19, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, drive um, new customer behavior changes from offline to online business, um, okay? And uh, for the business model, if uh, you, you have uh, quite a a number of physical outlet, you better think about B2B -B and B2C or even B2B to C, okay? And the pictures show you, uh, the first one is the CU mask, facial mask produced by a famous group 
called crystal crystal lithium group uh, this is one of the biggest uh, garment manufacturer in the world and they are they are um, the uh, OEM manufacturer for quite famous brand like Marks and Spencer, like Gap, like uh, you know uh, JC Penny already the, the one already famous. But uh, but but in this year they also have to convert some of their production line to produce facial masks. Okay, not just the manufacturer but also a famous brand like Louis Vuitton. You see another picture and also uh, Burberry. And even uh, Chanel, you see Chanel this year also uh, convert some of that uh, uh, the, um, the perfume uh, production line to produce hand sanitizers. Okay, so um, new issues. If you create a new product, okay, the fabric you're going to use is quite different uh, with your existing product. Yeah, the fabric to use for a facial mask is quite special. Not the same fabric to use for producing COVID, okay? So where can you source those little fabric? Which supplier can help you? Okay, that's going to create a new issue. If you are the supply chain guy, okay, you got a big headache. And um, when we talk about supply chain, we, we must talk about the demand. Yeah? It's all about, you know, supply chain is all about demand and supply hand in hand. And uh, quite a number of demand side disruption everywhere this year and uh we all are aware uh your mother go to the supermarket to grab the toilet paper <laughs> to grab all the necessity right and uh even in uh in the state um the president trump um issued the executive order to uh, ask uh, tesla gm for uh instead of uh not just produce produce car but also produce uh, ventilators because hospital running out of ventilators uh, at the beginning of this year. So uh, and also you heard about uh, um, different place um, their brothers that post um, shut down right and uh, the goods can't export from China to uh, the west of the world at the beginning of this year. So. Um, so the, the disruption happening uh, from time to time, even recently, a um, few days ago when I uh, did some research, I also see an article uh, which is saying that because the export of China is quite well, but one thing out of container, one thing out of container is the current issue, okay? So that drive up the shipping costs. If you are the supply chain manager, you, you keep you keep with you know different headache in your mind, <laughs> different issues you have to you know uh, tackle for your company, right? So let's move on. Um, another thing to show you is the figures for um, the e-commerce. Uh, along the years, you will see uh, the figures of e-commerce keep going. And the funny thing is about uh, I highlight a company, a uh, Hong Kong TV mall. Yeah, I believe some of you uh, saw from there, right? And um, uh, the funny thing is um, Hong Kong TV Mall make loss in all the years except this year. So eventually COVID-19 saved them. Okay, their revenue surge this year. And uh, something interesting I could tell you if you think Hong Kong TV Mall is in retail business, their chairman, uh, Ricky Wong, will tell you it's wrong. If you think Hong Kong TV Mall is doing kind of uh, uh, e-market pace, means online landlord, uh, Wiki Wong will tell you it's also wrong. Uh, recently, when I talked to him, he said Hong Kong TV Mall is a data company, it's a technology company. <laughs> and uh, this echoes to uh, the digital recalibration as one of the key trends I mentioned before, right? Because uh, if you, you name yourself a data company, uh, yourself a technology company, yeah, um, you, you got more. Um, uh, Failure uh, in terms of uh, you, you, you will be more juicy from uh, invest point of view. You able to attract more investor to invest in your company. Next, um, impossible food and uh, beyond beyond meat. Anyone try the uh, plant based burger? I did try quite often. Today you can try uh, impossible burger or beyond meat burger. Uh, at uh, Pacific Coffee or even uh, McDonald's also offer Omni Pork meal. 
So the plant-based meat is so juicy, uh, not just from an uh, investor perspective, but also can piece to uh, Gen Z and millennials who look for eco-friendly products, okay? So that also come back to uh, if you're selling something traditional, okay? Then those new area is something you, you, you have to explore, okay? And uh, another new thing to uh, share with you is uh, regarding the packaging. Uh, it used to have a lot of waste in packaging. So uh, Casper, one of the biggest uh, brewer, uh, beer brewer uh, in the world, they develop kind of uh, green friendly packing called Slap Pack, which um, only have a droplet of brew between cans. Uh, so will you have green friendly in mind to piece the new generation consumers? Um, another thing is uh, regarding the food source, your mother will shop food source only at the supermarket or today uh, from Hong TV Mall, but imagine what can be done differently for industrial consumption. Can we put a source machine uh, in kitchen of big restaurant uh, and the consumption is measured by IoT device so the refill is a uh, fan down managed automatically. Can we do this kind of, uh, I name it source as a service model for food catering industry. Okay, some uh, innovative idea to share with you. Um, okay, the trade wall. Uh, impact of trade wall is about uh, additional tariff applied to your product export from China to USA. So this will hurt your profit margin. Uh, some of my clients who do have uh, multiple person base across the group will have uh, its factories in China to fulfill domestic China market and will have its factory outside China to fulfill the demand for Western countries. And uh, new regulations, uh, just aware new regulations, uh, not just for the health and safety, but also environmental protection. Example is uh, import of recycled paper, uh, which is to be prohibited by end of this year. However, the import of pulp to China is not restricted. Uh, so paper manufacturers have to run up their production in Belt and Road countries to collect recycled paper there and convert them to pulp and ship back to China, but also come up with new issues. How can you source local suppliers to supply you the, uh, the recycled paper in Bell and Roll countries, okay? If you are the supply chain guy, you're going to have a little issue, right? So um, another thing is um, the voice and protest all over the world on uh, panic friendly environmental protection. You see the protest happening in the world every year, everywhere. And uh, for the labels, um, um, this example um, also show you the diet change of new generation. So new label um, trend, say, say for example, the uh, new trade score in Europe will impact uh, your packing. If you have goods export to uh, Europe, you have to consider that, okay? So uh, how can you accommodate all those requirements, regulation into your supply chain? into your manufacturing. Those are the things you have to consider. And that keep happening from time to time.